This vast expanse of ice is an autonomous province of Denmark. The first inhabitants of the country came from Asia across the Bering Strait 4,500 years ago. Then it was the turn of the Vikings around the year 1000. And finally, the Europeans in the 17th century. Greenland currently has a population of 56,000. The population lives only on the west coast, as the rest of the island is covered by an inhospitable ice cap. More than 30% of Greenlanders are aged under 18. The people here have always had to cope with a particularly hostile environment. In winter, the cold is Arctic, and in summer, the temperatures only rarely rise above 10 degrees. Cultivable farmland is almost non-existent and is only used for rearing animals. The greatest source of revenue for the country is fishing. The prices of fish are the same everywhere in Greenland. That way, fishermen's incomes are guaranteed. This is fin whale. You can eat it raw, fry it, boil it or dry it. A lot of families will be eating fin whale this evening. And over here, we have whale skin. It's the blubber that's good. It's very rich in vitamin C, so we eat it raw. Mmm, it's very good. Like traditional fishing, hunting is also an important activity. In Greenland, people also eat seal and walrus. Although they still use polar bear skins to make clothes, in their homes people can be found surfing the internet and watching satellite TV. Greenland isn't like any other country. The natural environment is huge and infinite. The distances are colossal, the mountains and icebergs enormous. Greenlanders travel about by boat. The longest road in the country is only 13 kilometers long, and a good number of villages can only be accessed by sea. Such is the case with Road Bay. In the 16th and 17th centuries, there were Dutch whale hunters living here, hence the Dutch name Road Bay, the Red Bay. Road Bay is a small village with 45 inhabitants, who all live traditionally by fishing and hunting. Some people work for the town in various roles, in shops and elsewhere. But for the most part, it's a community of hunters and fishermen. In Road Bay, there are no roads, no cars, no running water in the houses. The residents desalinate seawater for washing and melt ice for drinking water. Life is harsh, like Greenland itself. But it's also built around traditions that are very much alive. One is the wearing of the national costume. A white canvas anorak and dark trousers for men and a richly coloured costume for women. It's a ceremonial dress the Greenlanders are very proud of. The national costume is made up of several different elements, mainly sealskin for the collar and cuffs, which is dyed black. The top is made of beads. There used to be just a narrow edging of beads, but now beads aren't so rare, the collar is wider. The colours of the beads indicate the age of the woman wearing them. So does the colour of the silk blouse worn underneath. Girls or young women wear red blouses, and the more the woman ages, the darker the colour of her blouse will be. Mine is violet, and that corresponds to my age, over 50 years old. Making a costume like this takes a long time. Just to obtain such a luminous white, the sealskin that the boats are made of has to dry in the sun for a year. For big occasions, no Greenlander would imagine themselves dressed in anything other than their national costume. It's a custom that every family is careful to hand down to future generations. 
The drum dance is also part of the cultural heritage. Back in the mists of time, this dance was reserved for the shaman who used it to contact the spirits or to recount legends. The drum, a sealskin stretched over a ring of wood, was the only instrument in the country for centuries. Generally speaking, the drum dance is part of the roots of Greenland culture through the ages. This dance has very great importance, as much as a means of entertainment as for passing on stories and serious messages. Fortunately, you can still find good drum dancers, mainly on the East Coast, and some of my generation have learnt the art. An essential tool taken from the Eskimo culture, the traditional kayak is still built in Greenland. The simple light wood boat is made from a wooden structure covered with seal skins or canvas. The kayak is a very old tradition. It has existed here for a very long time. And in the past, it allowed a large number of Greenland families to earn their living. The first time I went in a kayak, I was one year old. But I started paddling myself when I was six or seven. That was 10 or 12 years ago now. It's hard the first time, but once you learn the technique, it's easy. I like it very much, and I'd like to continue doing it. When you kayak at sea, surrounded by nature, you get a wonderful feeling. You're all alone, and when there's ice in the water, it's beautiful. One of the best feelings you can experience. You become another person when you kayak. If a boat allows you to go along the coast, adventuring onto the icy expanse to hunt requires a suitable vehicle for the terrain. Nothing beats a sled for this job. Greenland dogs are extremely hardy animals, sometimes half wild, and trained to pull heavy loads across the ice. I use my dog team to transport the fish I catch in winter in the ice fjord to the town here. These dogs are very important to Greenland. We couldn't live without them. I grew up with dogs. My father and brother passed their knowledge to me, and I inherited the team from them. I've been doing this for 25 years. Ancestral companions, the Greenlanders still have nothing to beat sled dogs for helping them in their daily tasks. The town of Ilulisat has no fewer than 4,000 dogs for 6,000 inhabitants. Such a fascinating universe of ice cannot but lend itself to legends. The Tupilak is part of the ancient myths of the local culture. Originally, the shamans used these tortured statuettes to bring harm upon enemies via a spirit called Tupilak. When people lived in very small communities, before the arrival of Christianity in Greenland, they made Tupilaks. They believed that it gave them power over their adversaries when there were disputes or confrontations. So they used these Tupilaks to win battles. Still today, the artist's skill with the raw material transforms a narwhal tooth, a walrus tusk or a reindeer antler into an impressive little tupilac. Yeah. 
The artist's state of mind is very important because it's reflected in the tupelac. If you're a bit sad, it becomes hard to work on a tupelac. It's better to be in a good mood. Tupelacs are a very ancient tradition, and each statuette is unique. It's important for us to be able to show visitors the tupelac, part of our cultural heritage. Greenland is attracting more and more people. In summer, tourists searching for something genuine come in search of the unique experiences offered by this icy country.